Uh, I would like to start out thanking Darren and Morgan. Uh, there's Morgan over there. For all their help and stuff, I appreciate them asking me to come today and, and be a part of this. I've already learned an awful lot just sitting here observing what's gone on so far. So it's probably going to be a, a big learning tool for me along with the rest of you and that. So I do appreciate that. Uh, to reiterate a little bit of what Carrie said, uh, I believe as a landowner or representative of that landowner, you should be approving all your roads, since we're talking about roads today. Uh, whether you're the one flagging them or you're not, you need to be heavily involved in that process to uh, be out there. If Carrie's the one that flags it in and everything and you're the landowner, then you should get with Kerry and walk that alignment, I guess what I'm saying, and uh, be approving the spur roads that we were talking about. Those would probably be your temps that we just talked about. Uh, I'm a firm believer the more you can get involved in it, there, then there's no gotchas at the end. Whoever's doing it for you, whether it be a logger or the state or whoever, that... Uh, you as a landowner or an individual, whoever's in charge of that land, get involved rather than just turn someone loose with a, a D7 like we've seen in one of the videos that just says, well, we want to hit that ridge up there at that saddle and, and just take off plowing. I see that quite often in some private stuff. Uh, we'll set up a D6, 7 to sit there. All of a sudden, they'll just start working their way up through with no flag line or anything. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, roads. Oh, we got it up there. Good. I'm going to be talking about grades, road widths, clearings, and turnouts and curves a little bit today. And it's going to be pretty informal. I'm a pretty informal guy. I uh, basically work on the ground. Been trained by the Forest Service. And so a lot of my experience will come from field operations. Uh, getting back into grades here, uh, grades that we use, we like to hold them under 10%. We will go up to 12, uh, and if it's adverse pull, we like to hold it under that. And we talked about adverse versus uh, the other, so if we're pulling adverse instead of favorable, we like to... Uh, we like to hold the grade down a little bit. Those log trucks getting a little slick or tough weather cost you more money pulling those steeper grades. So if at all possible, hold them, hold them, hold those grades down, down to a certain percent. I like to say we like 10 percent. We will go over if we have to. We're going to look at a few slides now that, uh, uh, this picture here just showing a grade going up, uh, and what I put this in here for was this big patch of timber that sits out in here and clear over to here. This is a, a main access road that would be open for eons. And uh, we've hard surfaced this road. There's been millions and millions of board feet over uh, 25 years come out this road. But the fellow that laid this out when I helped him lay this out, we didn't have a road here. We started with this, uh, with our Abney at that time, which I didn't bring, but it does the same thing as these grade machines here do. All these little tools I just showed you will shoot grade. We started out here and put this on grade. And like I say, this has been a long-term road. We have some short access roads that go off over this way and out into the timber that we close with gates. And stuff, but this road here, the grade you can see is very gentle. We can pull that going either way, loaded or empty. Uh, in your planning, you have a huge stand of timber, and so we look at it, wondering, well, how do we get started? Where do we go? And uh, so, I like the comment that the uh, sister made over here. Uh, we like to lay our roads in as close down here along this bottom as we can get. It costs money to skid uphill. It costs time and money to skid uphill. 
So if you can keep your road down underneath your timber and work a little temp road up sometimes, up through here, over, that you probably close out, cost you a little less money. So try to skid downhill with most of your equipment. If you get in real steep ground, like Carrie said, you probably have to go to a cable system of high leads. or, But I don't see too much of that going on in Utah. Some, but not a lot. Most of it's our rubber tired and our dozer skidders. So cost money climbing uphill. So skid downhill loaded with your skidder if you can. Uh, this is an overview uh, in part of your planning. Uh, this particular patch of timber we went into here, we had a road coming across here and stopped right there. So we continue to cross here on a little bench, come in here, went around, and up through this timber and skid it downhill, skid this down to here. We did have some adverse haul. We had to get down into this. We have some heavy bugs working in here. So we had to get down into it. Our road came in here. In order to get enough grade to get down under here, we had to make a little turn and come down over into here with the road. And so this was adverse pull, 5% pull to get up out of there. On that, so it was it was part of our long-term planning that we did with this particular job here th about five years ago. So uh, your planning for these grades are pretty important as you're as you're starting in it. Uh, this little photograph I throwed in for planning. Uh, this particular cell was on some private land over by Evingston, and uh, what happened on it is they called me up one day and they says, hey, we got to come across a little piece of your property, the National Forest property. So I went over and looked at it. And what they had done is uh, had gone up this road and up this canyon till they hit National Forest property. Well, when I came in, I came into right here and stopped. And I looked at that a minute and I thought, wow, that's going to be a disaster. Come underneath that with a loaded logs. I throwed this load of logs in there just to show you that these logs would be hitting this guy wire right here. Can you, all of you see the guy wire? It's a little hard to see right there. This tele or this power pole guy wire. So anyway, the logger's sitting there one day with a load of logs. You can see my truck sitting right there. <coughs> Can't get out. He asked me. He says, "What do you think we ought to do?" I says, "Well, if it was me." Uh, do the environmental work that you're doing. You can't change your road much. You've got a stream over here, a big well box, and big power box right here is a well box. I says, I think I'd swing around a little wider right there, come right around it like that, and hook back on. And that's what they ended up doing for the few loads of logs that come out of there. But they've since worked with the power company now. And the power company is going to try to move the pole over here for them so they can go on up here and get, they got about three million board feet of, of bug timber up in their log. So that's part of your planning. They hadn't recognized it when I got there. They just figured they were ready to go and go to work. And they'd been going underneath that thing quite a bit with pickups and stuff. Uh, I just throw this one in for talk about road widths a minute. Uh, you notice the road here is pretty flat. Probably all see what's going on there. You guys that are loggers probably understand what happened here. Uh, we had a road get a little bit slick, and uh, grades are good, but the uh, truck kind of fell over in and tipped the logs over. Now they've got to bring a lo loader down and load them back on. Uh, this road here, uh, you can see, has uh, not been maintained for a while. This is on us. This is down at Spanish Fork, uh, where we made the cut here originally years ago. It's vegetated over real well. We've got to come in here now and uh, fix it, get these rocks out. But the grade on it is real good. We can haul up or down on this. So when we build it, they did a good job of grade there. It just needs maintained and fixed. Right here, we'll, we'll kind of slick them off with a grader. I guess if you do have a bulldozer, you've got to be real careful and not undercut this slope, this big slope here. You don't want to have a, a big 
cut going back in there that would keep it unraveling. Uh, you know, it, it just keep unraveling. That's what some of this rock's from. It's fell off the upper side. So the grater, if you have it, ho hopefully you've got a grater. But if you only have a dozer with a an angle dozer, it'll do that. Just put a light touch on it and come down there. And what you'll do is drift that dirt across, filling some of this in here. This won't look the same when you're through. You'll, you'll grade this across at a light feather grade out to here, down through it, and then uh, haul across it. You can throw grass seed back on when you're through. Uh, here again, uh, this grade we can haul either way on. Uh, we're going into widths a little bit here. Uh, we like to hold 12 feet through most of whatever we can do uh, on our roads. If we're going to use a long-term road like this, you may get up to 16 feet or even wider, depending on what your purpose of that road is. If it's just to log the timber out, try to keep it as narrow as you can get it. But like I say, 12 feet is about what the dozer ends up pushing when he builds a road or the grader ends up grading. Pretty hard to keep it under that with equipment that we use. This particular road uh, was an old road. You can see the existing cut here that was here by the pioneers. And uh, we were getting close to this riparian area. Didn't want to impact that with any road sediments coming off uh, using this road to log this big stand of timber that was out in here. So uh, we uh, used aggregate, put three inch underneath, capped it with about three inches of smaller on top and uh, worked out really well. We've hauled oh, about a million and a half feet across this at this time now. Uh, this gets back to what Darren talked a little earlier this morning. This come to my mind when he was talking water quality. Same with Kerry. Uh, here you have a stream, but you have vertical walls going way, way up on both sides. Old existing road on a county alignment. So, say we're going to haul logs down out of here, and there's no other alternative but to get down this. Uh, don't, this is what's driving some of the things you guys were talking about before. In years past, sometimes you'd see this dozed over, and dirt and stuff end up down here in this uh, stream. This is a stream with fish in besides. So, in a case like this, if you're going to side cast it, Try to take it down here around where you can side cast it without getting it in the stream or pull it back this way. But uh, the riprap along here is holding pretty good on spring runoff. Stays really well. Got a narrow width here. No passing. So you're going to have to pass either below it or above it. And uh, those things come up quite often like this around the state that I've seen. But... This isn't on National Forest, this is on a county section. So when we bring the blade in here, or the dozer, we're going to have to maybe put it on straight or angle it and try to pull this down with very little going this way, very little side cast. Keep it out of that stream as much as possible. Boy, it's a big issue now. Water has become a major, major issue. This is an old road that... Uh, we have re decommissioned a little bit. It was 12 feet wide when we started. These stumps right here are fairly tall. Probably wondering, well, how come them things are so tall? But they were in the road right here. When the logger went in here, he cut them off a little bit higher. We, uh, we like them to cut and skid beforehand. Some loggers don't like that. Uh, I like to go in there and, and tip over, push them out of the road. We, uh, we see that causing too much damage to our residual stand. So we have them come in and cut them, skid them, then build the road in through there. That's why these stumps were side cast over here to the side to begin with. And then we brought them back on when we got ready. But the reason I put this in here is we're going through a 12-foot swath right here. Another picture of it. 
you think, well, you got a big stand of timber, we can't get through 12 feet, but you can. It works pretty well. Uh, here again, you can see the same thing going on. It's just up the road a little farther, the same actual cell. Uh, we went right up through here and around and up further than what it shows. When we got through, we, we had side cast this as we were going up. You can see debris here. When, when the logger went in, we skidded, we skidded the merchantable timber out, side cast the stumps. When we were through, we put it back on the road and re-vegetated it. But it just talks about the widths that you got there. Same, uh, thing again here. We got road widths going up through here. You look at it. I showed it to my wife the other day. She says, that's narrow. How can you get up through there with one of them great big tr trucks? But anyway, it, it works. You can get up through them. This was a road, a temp road that Carrie talked about. Uh, long term or, or temporary roads, short term roads that we're going to use. In the National Forest, we like to close as many of them as we can get. Question came up, well, what are you going to do when you relog it in 30 years from now? I don't know. Maybe we'll helicopter it. You know, there's a lot of scuttlebutt on that in National Forest lands. Uh, so we, those kind of things we put back. We take an excavator. The fellow that brought the excavator up a minute ago, they, they were becoming quite a handy tool in our work. So, uh, anyway, you can go up through there at 12 feet wide. Don't let them tell you you can't. Some of them like to go 16, 20 feet. And uh, what I find that they do is that's to pick up this tree, that tree, that tree, these trees here. They're easy. They're right next to the road. They're on a log truck and headed to the mill in a heartbeat. And and so, yeah, they, they do like to go quite wide sometimes on our road widths. And I'll get into clearing here in a minute. If that was going to be a long-term road, uh, we'd open that up a lot wider. We'd cut more trees down, let the sun in there to dry it out. We may even put aggregate down on it. But where it was a short-term road, uh, one season road, we felt like we didn't want to do any more impact or take any more out of production than we absolutely had to. So that's why you can see the narrow, the narrow sides between it. Uh, this is looking down from where we were just standing, look up above here. Uh, the, the big tall stumps are actually right here behind us, right back here. We're looking down here to this main road. It's an aggregate road. All weather, what we call an all weather road. So it's gravel, can be hauled on, uh, if it does get rainy. And then this is where we approached and came onto it with the debris and stuff in the road. Uh, here's road width, uh, got a 850B here, plowing snow, uh, out of a, a small roaded area. Uh, most of you, probably know the width of the, the blade on it. So uh, we're under, we've got the 12 foot there. You can see from side to side here. And uh, so it does, that equipment can go down a pretty, pretty narrow road sometimes. But like I say, it has to be, each situation has to be evaluated. If you have a tree root that's sticking out, out of the road that you've damaged here real bad, you may have to cut that tree down. Here again, this is a new new piece of construction. It hasn't quite got the gravel aggregate on it yet. Uh, what was going on here is we had this corral along here, and it was getting getting uh, a lot of debris and stuff that was uh, pushing their fence over. The old existing road had been here a long time. Uh, we had our loggers come in. And uh, this isn't finished yet. You can see a little berm right here. Uh, he knocks this down a little bit, puts some logs along here to prevent traffic from getting into the fence. As you come down here a little further, we got a drain. That picture doesn't show it. We have a drain down here to drain the water off the road. Uh, this is some of the construction that we did uh, that I didn't like, uh, done years and years ago. You can see the road starting to revegetate somewhat. But, uh, 
This was a long-term road. We should have laid this slope back when we cleared it. Uh, right now, it's just keeping unraveling and unraveling. For long, this tree here will probably fall over and dump down in the road. So, in our planning and our clearing limits that we would have flagged, uh, that tree definitely would have been one to come. Laid this slope back just a little more so it would have vegetated a little better so we can get uh, something growing on it. It's hard to grow anything right here because uh, it just keeps unraveling, unraveling. That's about 40 years old. And you can see some of them have fell over. Wood haulers have cut them off before that fell down in this road. It continues this slope around here quite a ways around further back. Here we're just getting ready to clear a, an area. We've got the trees cut down up through here. Skidders haven't quite got here yet. They're going to clear these logs out before the cat comes in and starts building road up through here. Uh, here we're widening a turn. We, uh, we needed some uh, rock material uh, here to move down the road about three miles down this road where out towards where Kerry had rode on his four-wheeler on Red Creek Mountain. Uh, we had some real severe deep ruts going on out there, some, some erosion going on. Deer hunters chained up would go down in four feet deep. Uh, we, we didn't have the teeth to stop it. It's pretty hard to stop deer hunters in Utah from going down roads even if you got gates on. So what we chose to do was uh, widen this turn a little bit here, this curve, so we could uh, get low boys and stuff down it. Uh, we actually had the National Guard uh, weekend warriors, we called them, on a weekend maneuvers. Uh, 113th and the 1457 come out and uh, helped us a little bit on this piece and down the road farther, a little piece further. And uh, probably some of the National Guard guys would recognize those units maybe, but uh, they come out, brought their dump trucks. We took our excavator and our dump truck and we hauled this down this public road and fixed a road that's been a long-term road. I wish I had some pictures of where this went. When I went through it, I didn't have any. This is only about three years old. What we did here, we widened this back with the excavator. And when we got through with it, we took the excavator and laid this back at a three to one. Uh, I guess, does all of you know what a three to one means, I guess? A slope. That would be this slope here going back is uh, three to one. So... Kerry's an engineer, and he can probably explain it better than I can, but you come out with a, a flat tape measure or ruler, whatever you've got there. Come out three feet away from your slope here. Come out three feet, measure down one foot, and that's what you call a three-to-one. Close enough? All right. I, uh, I'm not an engineer. Like I say, I grew up on the woods and out in the field. So, but that's, we do a lot of that, and I've learned over the years to, to work with them slopes. And I like a three to one, wherever we can put it in. Uh, here, uh, this turnout, uh, what I, what I throwed this in for is, uh, this, uh, road that come off of, uh, I think this off state lands. But, uh, say we needed a turnout right here, a passing area right here. This road has been closed since. But uh, a couple of things going on here. We could widen this. We've got plenty of room in here to make us a nice turnout. Passing, whatever. Uh, landings make good turnouts wherever we build a landing. And uh, a lot of these landings are that we're getting nowadays, you can load with self-loaders or another type of loader on a truck. You don't need a huge, big landing. Uh, to deck thousands of logs unless you're helicoptering or, or needing a spot to put in mass amount of landing. You can get by a pretty small landing. And I think that's what went on here. I'm not sure. Probably had a landing there. So it would be real easy if we wanted to keep this road to make a turnout right here. The other thing going on here that I'm going to get into later today in drainage 
is this is a this is a drainage right here, and you can see what happened. They put a piece of PVC in there to drain it. Didn't really pull the ditch down here very well to drain across. I don't like the PVC stuff. Uh, I won't allow them to use it. I see it on private land off and on. But what I like in these temporary roads is a piece of well casing. And a lot of you know what I'm talking about when you get a half-inch Schedule 80 piece of pipe, 14 inches in diameter, 12 inches in diameter. You can reach in here with the loader or whatever piece of equipment you got. You can take the dirt off the top so you don't get it into the water. Reach in there with a grapple or whatever and pick that piece of well casing right out of there. And you load it on the log truck or drag it down the road to the next crossing. You stick it in again. They're, they're strong. Doesn't need a lot of cover over them. And you just keep reusing them. You don't end up with this type of thing in the woods. Uh, here, uh, I think I've got a couple of slides of what's going on here. This is a big failure that came in a road due to some drainage problems. It's going down here. See that little teeny culvert right there? Uh, I'm going to get into more of this a little later in presentation, but uh, saturated, failed, went down in here, made a mess out of things. The same photo, looking up it again. What we did to correct this, and we've done a lot, I was going to use this in uh, fabric later today, and, uh, and I will get into it more, but let me talk about it for a minute right now. What we did is we had uh, water coming down here, culvert plugged up. And by the way, I know, I know it was said 18 inches here earlier. We won't go with anything less than 24 inch. We recommend 24 inch. They're easier to clean. They'll hold more water. You get the smaller ones and, and they plug up easy and they're hard to clean. Uh, if it's a temp crossing, like I say, the well casing, we can use that. But for our long-term culverts, 24 inch or larger, yeah, we, we have to go at least 2%. We have to have, a, you mean the slope of the culvert coming out? Yeah, we, we won't go under 2%. We have to have at least 2% slope. So hopefully a little more so it'll flush and go, but a minimum we have to go at 2%. Fishing streams are different, and I'll be getting into culverts later today. Got some pictures of some culverts and stuff. But right here, what we did real quick, uh, we took this and we dug it off. We took the excavator, brought our excavator in, kind of cleaned it out, took and went down uh, 16 feet right through here. We we dug this all out, back and forth, hauled it out with the National Guard dump trucks. Again, this is another National Guard job that helped us out. Uh, we took this out. We had some big rock hauled in from a rock pit. I'm talking big rock. Hauled in from a rock pit. We took fabric, a geo fabric, which I'll get into a little later today. We lined this big hole, big pit, with these rock and took a culvert out the bottom of it, a 24-inch culvert. Went right out of here, right across there. And so what it did is it, it caught the water coming down through here, put it through that trench and out that culvert. Because what caused the problem in the beginning was the saturation the saturation of this drainage right here that had been filled, this big cut had been filled across it. Even though they'd put a culvert in, it was still seeping water at six, about pretty near 16 feet deep through the ground. And so we did that. We hauled a lot of rock in here, major loads of rock, kept filling it up, and today you can just drive right across it. You don't even know it's there. That's, that's about uh, 10 years old. Yeah, this is just another picture of it, looking down it, looking where it where it done the damage and took the debris down the canyon. That's another piece of it that fell off of there. When the National Guard came in, they brought the D7s in. Uh, it was dry then. They actually tapered this off where they could drive down through it and out the other side to stockpile rock. They stockpiled rock for two weeks before we started working on that. I just throw this little picture in for kicks. Uh, what I meant here by, well, you can see this processor. 
those that don't know, haven't seen a delimmer processor work, and that's what this is. These brush piles get burned later on. Uh, we got some sheep, could be cattle, whatever, but everything can be in balance. We can multiple use these lands, timber them, turn around and graze them, and reseed them, and everybody can get along and it, and it can work great. We can put an ATV trail, we can put a hiking trail through here, and everything can still work after. Some people have a thinking, well, gee, them loggers been through there and it's just disintegrated things. Well, that's not the case. It actually makes a lot of nutrients, can work out real well for everything. This is just a little photo a few years back where I had a logger that wanted to winter log. You can see the old tie hack cabins that they used to stay in, chained up, and snowed in, but they been pushing snow out this strawberry valley. Uh, this is just another picture at the end that I had. Uh, today this trailer is completely buried. There's 27 of them up there that got snowed in on last deer hunt, and they couldn't get them out. Didn't have cats or anything else. These are snowmobile tracks here, but there's 27 of them scattered around up there. And like I say, this picture is this trailer is completely gone. Not even any of it left today. Snowed right over.